Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Today you join me at Daily Race C on this week's Daily Races. Group 4 cars around Laguna Seca. Um, and thankfully it is not a TT fest. It's actually another car that actually does pretty well here and it's the Renault Megane. But as we jump into this race, you can see I have no HUD. Uh, and I completely forgot that um, at the weekend, or on my previous live stream, I should say, that I turned all the display info off. So I had to quickly turn that on. But as we get this race underway, I've also realised, if you look to the left-hand side of your screen, that I've somehow... Now, don't ask me how, because I don't even know. It might be a glitch, or it might just be me being a pillock. I'm going to go with a pillock option. But no one's name appears on the left-hand side on the time delta. It's just the cars, which is really strange, considering I can see people's names in front of me. Please do let me know if it's setting. I get a feeling it's going to be a setting. I think I'm a bit of a pillock here. But never mind. Let's get this race underway. We've got 13 laps around Laguna Seca. Absolutely awesome track. And as soon as this popped up, I was very interested in it. Group 3 races around here are absolutely awesome. Uh, as soon as it popped up with Group 4, I'm sure I was a bit sceptical, just like everyone else was. Um, but thankfully, it's a lot better than I expected. And this video, honestly, it's got so much so much action in it. It's really good. It's, it's good fun, this video. I enjoyed doing this. So fingers crossed you guys really enjoy uh, this video as well. But we're, we're um, two free corners, or three or four corners, I should say, going through this left hand, avoiding the sausage cup and the dirt on the left hand side. You can see uh, the guy in 17th there, now in 18th, getting all over the place there, all over shot. And then just to try and make up some time here, <laughs> he, t he cuts a corner so badly. Uh, that is quite drastic, but I, I rate that, mate. I really rate the, <laughs> I rate the effort to try and gain some time. But unfortunately, that is without a doubt going to slam him with a one-second penalty. Look behind him, there he is. There, so yeah, one-second penalty for our good friend there. What's his name? I don't know because, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he's just called McGann Trophy now. I'm sorry, my friend, but your name has just vanished. I don't know what it is until the end of the race. So yeah, just about to um, finish lap one there. Just about to go around. I think it's corner eleven. I think it's corner 11. Uh, too much of a sausage curb there. Um, normally I like my sausages, but taking too much of the uh, sausage curb there. So we finished lap one. Um, the idea of this, when I started to record this video, was to do a, not so much a last to first, but I wanted to show you guys that the McGann um, can really um, take on the Audi TT in this race, because we know what FF cars are like. We know how overpowered they are on this game at the moment. Uh, in my opinion, they should be in a different category. They just completely ruin the Group 4s at the moment with how overpowered they are. But as soon as you get a bit of tyre wear involved and there's a certain amount of laps, let's just say more than 10 laps, then the McGann and any other cars kind of comes back into play. But specifically, I think the McGann uh, is a bit of a beast this week. So if you are fed up of using the Audi TT, uh, you'll notice the McGann is an absolutely solid choice. Second half of the race, you'll see in this video, absolutely comes into its own. Uh, the Audi TT really, really falls off. You can see there's two people actually off there on the sand as we go up the hill towards the corkscrew. Um, so there's a position for me right there. Nice and easy stuff. Uh, German getting very, very um, tight there um, with the guy in 15th place. Uh, SM uh, base player I'm going to go for. Yeah, I could only just just see that. Um, so yeah, we go for the middle sector or whatnot. Uh, we'll go purple, but as expected on the second lap. Now these two get a little bit friendly. I'll get awfully close um, to this guy in front of me, and then he's just going to break. So you know, I really have to, you know, get out of the way very quickly, dramatically slam on the brakes, go to the left hand side. Uh, the McGann is absolutely awesome on the traction, and um, it's just absolutely easy to keep it under. Well, to keep it stable, so I managed to get the move done. As you can see, the German then um, getting a little bit uh, friendly with our friend with the Quadrant Livery. Uh, he has got the slipstream though as we go and enter lap four. So unfortunately, couldn't quite get the move done here. So we start in the 19th, three laps, we've only taken three positions. So it's not looking too good right now if we want that first position. Uh, German sends it up the inside of our quadrant friend here. Um, he doesn't quite see that I'm on the left-hand side. A little bit of argy-bargy now. I can tell he's not very happy with that. So he tries to send it, but unfortunately, <laughs> unlike his quadrant friends, uh, he ran out of talent, unfortunately, and completely outbraked himself uh, going wide, and that was another free position. So up to P15 then. My objective for this race is to obviously win it. So we're going to have to really get our head down here if we want to get anything from this race. And I, trust me, trust me when I say this, it really starts to get a bit uh, crazy near the end. So you'll see exactly what I mean. Anyways, just going through this left-hander here. Um, probably the most deadliest corner, as you can see, 
the guy from Greece, uh, Alex, just proving my point here. Uh, if you touch that sausage curb or go wide, you are just on the sand and it's just just pain. Just pure pain going through there. Going through the corkscrew, absolutely awesome. Probably one of the most famous corners in the world, if not the most famous. Um, absolutely wicked corner. It's just so good. Uh, you can't even see. You can't really see it until you're literally just about to dip into it. It's, it's fantastic. Anyways, P13. I'm going to shoot up the inside if I can. It's a little bit of a nudge. Apologies, mate, but he just moved uh, in the braking zone there, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to um, give that position back or you know apologise. I feel like I was in the right there. Uh, I was going for the move, and he just pulled across me uh, whilst I was in the braking zone. Again, guys, let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong there. But uh, yeah, during the race, I felt like that was the right decision. So there's two positions for me right there, really. Got the inside of the um, the Dutchman. Again, sorry, I haven't seen a name race, so I don't know what it is. Uh, and yeah, a few laps later, we managed to catch up. Um, I think this is the Slovakia. Um, the Slovakian flag, I, I, I think. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, uh, Taj, Tajo Boss is the guy we're following. So he's in the McGann as well, so he's made a smart choice, I think. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get past him. We'll just have to rely on pure pace as such. Now, he goes a little bit wide. I potentially could go up the inside here, side by side. It's not the best idea, though, for you in that corner. You have to rely on the purse on the outside to be very sportsmanlike, shall we say, and, and give you the space. And that's a real rarity. And I get awfully close. Bloody hell. That is, <laughs> that is close. I'm amazed I didn't slam straight into the back of that geezer there. I'm very... Very fortunate there, breaking it to um, board there on the left-hand side. He takes too much sausage, but so do I. So too much sausage for me, and I go wide, and that is just pure pain personified right there. Uh, we're going to have to, once again, get our heads down, try and concentrate here, and see if we can catch up um, with this group of cars ahead. You can see, is that, is that, I think that's um, P6. I think it's up to P6 up there, isn't it? I think there is, yeah. So P6 uh, up ahead as these two are getting rather friendly in front of me, so that might actually work in my favour slightly. Now you can see the time, I'm 14 seconds off the leader, um, but don't worry, uh, things will happen is again, the Spaniard uh, and our man here, Boss, uh, is getting a little bit too friendly as they start to fight, and I nearly absolutely bin it going through the last corner, turn 11 here at Laguna Seca, but thankfully because of the McGann, how awesome this thing is, so easy to control, uh, I managed to just keep the foot planted actually and just correct the steering, which is... Um, Something you probably couldn't do in any other car in this game. It's, it's such a good handling car. Uh, it's fantastic. Just lacks top end, but everywhere else, uh, it's absolutely awesome. A little bit of sausage there, but nothing to um, be worried about. Okay, still behind this guy. Um, it doesn't look too good at the moment, does it? Considering we're six laps, six laps to go, and there's what almost 14 seconds between myself and someone else. But you can see, um, he, I was just side by side, and the guy's just gone too deep. So we're going to go switch back there. Absolutely lovely move. And what you're about to see here, folks, you see three people fighting. You know this won't end well as we go through the left-hander. This Audi TT just absolutely destroys the McGann. Uh, game over. GG, boys. He is out of this. There's no way he's coming back. And we decide to see if we can slip up the inside <laughs> through the corkscrew. And that's exactly what we've done. So that's a nice move past uh, the Brit there. So that puts us up to P8 now. So that was, what, three, four positions in a matter of... Um, two corners, two three corners there, which is uh, pretty awesome. So let's see if we can crack on and track down the Italian. And Tommy197016. Yes. <laughs> yes, the Italian called Tommy1976. I'm not sure what the extra digits are for. I assume the year um, he was born. I'm, again, waffling so much right now. It's unbelievable. But we've got the inside uh, of this straight, I guess. And then this... I don't even know if you want to call that a corner, it's so, so small, but we just managed to um, outbreak him here side by side. Unfortunately, uh, we braked at the same time and I had the inside line, he just couldn't quite uh, keep alongside me there, didn't quite have the traction. And that puts me up to P7 now, absolutely awesome, but we're still 13 seconds behind the TT here. So, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do this, but... We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to get as close to P1 as we possibly can. Now, the Brit serves his penalty here, and that's going to put us up to P6. Absolutely lovely stuff. Seven seconds between us and fifth place then. But it doesn't take me long to catch up. So as you're going to see here, two laps later, going through the corkscrew, here's a group of cars, and there's P3 potentially up ahead. So we've managed to catch up, and you can see the time is only 6.5 seconds between myself and first place. Now, I've managed to catch up with all these 
um, front-wheel drive cars apart from P3, and they really are struggling now. So their tyre wear is absolutely uh, abysmal. Even with the brake bias all the way to the rear, they're not really going too far, as you can see. <laughs> that guy just fully sends it. Um, <laughs> his brakes or tyres, I don't know what happened there. I don't even know if he forgot to brake. I don't know what it was. Maybe he just doesn't like this guy. <laughs> but he absolutely sends it. Gets absolutely nowhere. Probably got reset on the track, unfortunately for him. But uh, yeah, that was quite funny. Managed to um, <laughs> sneak a little brilliant little move there. Um, he just left a little gap, and I managed to sneak my little Renault Megane through there. Uh, nice stuff. There was a little bit of contact, but I feel like I had the, I had the space, I had the room. Uh, the door was wide open, and I took it. And yeah, that puts us up to P4 now. As you see, we went through the first sector, uh, less than a tenth down on our personal best. Uh, which is a 28.4. I can get in the 27s. Uh, if you watch me do this race on the live stream on Monday, uh, I can get in the 27s. Uh, it's just fighting through the pack at the moment. It is quite dangerous. Uh, and at this point, 12 laps in, you know, with the tyre wear, even as good as it is in this began, um, you're asking for trouble, really, if you're going to try and push that hard to get in the 27s uh, so late on. So, yeah, that's not really a possibility. Let's go through the corkscrew then. Uh, for the penultimate time as we go through here just making sure we don't go all four wheels over the white stuff on the right hand side get to the right hand side here and then looking for that sausage curb on the left just not touching it though um, very close to the curb and then hit the curb on the right curb on the left curb on the right once more it's all about hitting those curves and those apexes on this track I feel absolutely nailing it for the last sector I have to say break on the free board on the right hand side um, you can actually get two wheels on the sausage curb um, I'll give you there's actually a point for Every time I've said sausage curb in this in this video, I've said it an awful lot, haven't I? Anyways, yeah, so last lap here, we were going to be battling for a podium. So maybe, just maybe, we might get a podium. Who would have thought that? Now, I go to the right, and then I was shimming over to the left, and I just duped this guy, and I just managed to get the position back. But he makes an absolutely awesome switch back there. Uh, a little bit of contact. That's my fault. I'll hold my hands up there. Um, but, yeah, thankfully, he keeps the position. Um, I say thankfully. Um, I want it. But anyways, uh, he goes a little bit wide here. I just have a little bit of a launch. We're going to go side by side. And what I was talking about here earlier, um, if you go side by side, you have to be brave. Thankfully, that guy backs out. So a big shout out to him. So thank you for that. We go side by side. Um, if he didn't, I think that would have ended badly for both of us. I, I was fully committed to the cause there. Um, so yeah, thankfully, we're up to P3 now. So what was he? P9? Uh, what was it? Um, what was he? P9 or something like that on lap 9? or P7 or, or whatnot, and we were 13 seconds behind. Now, four laps later, we're a second and a half or first place, chasing down second. Okay, going for the corkscrew for the very, very last time. Let's just see how bad the tyre wear on these Audi TTs are. I'm really, really catching up here, going through this left-hander. I imagine his front tyres on this car must be absolutely dead. And the Dutch guy here goes left, just leaves the tiniest of gaps. And once again, I'm going to stick my Renault Megane up there, and we get into P2. Now, just one corner to go, surely. Surely not. Anyways, breaking on the three metre board. Again, two wheels on the Sasha curb, just trying to get the power down as soon as I possibly can, but as close as we get, and try as I might, we just don't have the top end. And we're going to cross the line here, just a tenth off first place which is absolutely awesome considering where we started right at the back um, 18 positions gained essentially just short of getting that p1 but absolutely awesome i don't know why i added the cat in there i just feel like i wanted to add it, it just, <laughs> my editing skills are just top notch aren't they they're just fantastic but I just, I just felt like the cat needed to be in there i really like the cat and i put it in there there you go anyways really hope you enjoyed that video guys the video that video is that video if you did Please leave a like, um, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.